Hey you guys, it's Brit. Tonight we're here with a good old-fashioned reaction to the most recent video that All In With Ari, aka Ronnie Spur, has put up on her channel. This was... <laughs> it was posted eight days ago and she has not put up any other content. So as far as her coming back to YouTube and giving people what they're here for, I don't know. I, I don't know where the content is. She's taking little photos of the um, her shadow on the beach and talking about the Lord. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much where we're at. She has 85.1 thousand subscribers. So her channel is pretty stagnant right now. Um, yes, she's getting views. Yes, she's still collecting AdSense, obviously. But as far as having people super invested in her and her journey and her story and her content, I think people are, it's kind of like a morbid curiosity at this point, and that might be totally wrong, but I think a lot of people, quite like myself, are just watching to watch. They're not watching because they're really interested in her or what it is that she's putting out at this point. So the title of the video is What Happened with the Rude Jude Interview? An Unexpected Trip to the Hospital. It has 2,000 likes to 2.1 thousand dislikes, so obviously we're pretty split there. And let's see, yeah, a lot of the comments giving her a lot of criticism regarding things that she's avoiding, her child, um, talking about her being a hypocrite, talking about, you know, lies, half-truths, all of the above. So either way, I'm reacting to this because y'all asked me to. I was not going to react to this initially, but a few, and I'm not going to make it seem like I got a hundred requests, but a few of you did ask because you don't want to support her channel. And just as an FYI, if there's ever a video that y'all are curious about, but you don't want the creator to collect the AdSense and don't make me announce the obvious. Some people probably do this with my videos and it is all good, but you can just download the video and the creator will not collect the AdSense off of that video because you just download it directly to your device or to your computer and you can watch it that way. Um, you know, it kind of just saves to your device like a normal video would. Depending on the size of the video, it can take up a lot of space. So that's something to keep in mind before you decide to do that for, you know, nine or 10 videos, it will eat up a lot of space. But if there's something like this where you're very curious, but you don't want to support her uh, monetarily, then that's something that y'all can also take into consideration. So this video is 32 minutes. Spoiler, I do not know if I'm going to get through all of it because if I feel like she is just talking in circles and being a bullshit artist, I'm not going to keep you guys here all night, but we will see what it has in store. I have not listened to this. I have no idea aside from what the comments said. So let's get started. I am back. I'm about to show you guys what I did record yesterday shortly after I got back to my car after everything happened. I don't go into the watermelons thing to me is really played out, but it's also very annoying. I, I think with this whole situation with her and the lies and the things that she has avoided and all of this, it would have been a good opportunity for her to just kind of rebrand, drop the kid-like hey watermelon shtick that she was doing, and actually step up to the plate and be transparent, own your stuff, tell people, um, you know, your side of the story because they have already seen these official court documents, and approach it from the stance of an adult who is owning her shit instead of a very immature girl who is running from her past and not wanting to talk about it because she is just quote not ready a whole lot of detail in the video because like i said it was just minutes after getting back to my car and i was still just out of it and trying to process and remember everything that had happened um but all the details of what i do remember are in the post and i'll go ahead and, and include those same pictures just to show you like what all kind of happened to me i did see a couple of comments where people were accusing me of faking an injury and it really sucks. It seems like everything I post or talk about, people think I'm just lying about it. I've well, that's the problem. When you start 
lying to people on the internet, when you literally start your YouTube channel based off of lies, people are going to literally have no reason to trust you. So instead of starting it out with lying, and here's the thing, some people got on me for not addressing her by her name Ari. Here's the thing, I haven't seen anything aside her saying that for her YouTube channel. I don't know if she has actually changed her name. For, for me, my personal opinion, for what it's worth, I think that it's just a channel name and it's something that she put out there hoping that people would not put two and two together as quickly as they did. I don't know if she has legally changed it or if it was just something for YouTube. And based off of all of the sketchy stuff that she has done up until now, I think that it's just something for YouTube so that people wouldn't know all in with Ronnie and quickly connect it to Ronnie Spur and then things would have hit the fan even sooner than they did. But she already wasn't prepared for it. So I'm going to address her as Ari and Ronnie um, because when you come on the internet and you start lying, um, people don't appreciate that, especially when you are putting out a really sad story that is filled with really weird pieces of information that are irrelevant and then the things that are relevant, you're avoiding them. She's old enough to understand that once you start lying, it is very hard to regain trust. And when you're talking to people on the internet, why should they trust you? They can just unsubscribe and go on to the next thing. They don't owe you anything. But as someone who is collecting money off of your subscribers, you do owe them a fair amount of transparency and that is what she has not given to them. Never in my life faked an injury and I'm just not a liar. What's ironic about those accusations is that lying is my number one biggest pet peeve. You know who says lying is my biggest pet peeve in a situation like this? Usually someone who's a liar. Um, <laughs> to automatically come out and say, oh, it's my biggest pet peeve, um, to me just is pretty much projecting onto the people that are calling her a liar because a lot of people have figured her out and she wasn't prepared and she's not happy about it. And it's a major reason why I'm not in a relationship. I hate lying and I make it a point to give every detail of the truth I just, I just, hold on. I think I thought she wasn't in a relationship because her last one was so bad that she literally had to run away from the state of Arkansas in the middle of the night and make it this like big getaway, um, runaway situation to California. So, okay, that's fine. But if you literally had to run away from your ex because your friends thought that you were going to end up on Dateline or one of those true crime shows. I'm not sure if lying would be the reason that I'm not in a current relationship if I was her. Don't lie. And even if I tried to lie, you would be able to tell because I'm not a good liar. I'm not. Um, I feel like I have to say this again. And I know that I don't, but I agree with her. I don't think that she's a good liar, and I think that's why people have been able to see through her so quickly. And the red flags were going up way before I started talking about her and other commentary channels started talking about her. There were people over on TikTok leaving comments questioning this channel way before I started talking about her. So, um, and, and there was also a Reddit page dedicated to discussing her I think a week or two before I started talking about her. So the red flags were going up for good reason. And like I said, when you come onto the internet and you literally the basis of your channel is based off of things that don't make sense to people, people are going to put two and two together and figure stuff out. And that's what they did. And I, I think that she underestimated the sluice of the internet and how quickly they can literally take her video and figure out exactly who she is and then everything else is uncovered quickly thereafter. A lot of people are just, they think that I'm on here trying to get sympathy, trying to get money from people and that's just not the case guys. Like I never wanted money from any of this. I never asked for money. I don't want Okay, you didn't ask for money, but why was your cash, cash app plugged? Why was the Patreon started? 
Patreon was started, there's no content for the, for the people that are giving her money on Patreon. There's just no extra nothing when it comes to this chick. She might have not come out and said, please send me money, but when you put out a really sad story like she did, and you you know, quickly thereafter start advertising things like Patreon and your cash app, you don't have to just come out and say, give me money for your content to be grifting. Empathy from people like this is my life. This is what's happening in my life. And I'm sharing it with you guys. And I just, I don't understand. How much is she sharing? How much is she really sharing? Because to me, it seemed like early on she was sharing, but then once people started to put the puzzle pieces together and talk about the other side of what she wasn't talking about or owning up to, then the content really went away. And since then it has been, she gets called out for something and then she disappears. And then she comes back with some sort of um, story or some kind of crazy thing that happened. So I don't really know how much she's actually sharing with people. To me, I don't see a whole lot of content that is sharing your life with people at this point. And as I said, if she would just be a big girl and address this like an adult and drop the I'm an innocent little girl card, then it, people might come around and start to listen to her again. But... I also think that it's way too late for some people. Life is short. Why are people, they don't need to waste their time watching someone like Ronnie when there are so many other people who are not lying and actually giving them consistent content. And on top of it, a lot of those other people are not plugging things like Patreon, merch, Cash App, and basically grifting on their platform. They're just putting out the content and those who are interested subscribe and those who aren't don't. And it's a fair deal. Like they're, they're sharing their story because they actually want to share their story. They're not expecting things in return. And never forget, this is the girl who had a couple of videos on YouTube, get really good views, and she immediately quit her job and then wanted to continue to tell people what a hard worker she is. Well, where is all the content? That's what I want to know. If you're such a hard worker and you were so quick to quit your job, then that would tell me that you want to put that much energy towards making content. Where is the content? Because aside from her little short stay allegedly in the hospital, what else have you been doing? Besides driving around, wasting gas, shopping at Target, and buying expensive coffee. Where is the content? You quit your job to do this. So you have subscribers that are expecting content and they're not even getting that. So why would they stick around? That's why people are leaving her channel and that's why people who are stayed subscribed aren't watching all of her stuff. They're just not into it anymore and if they are, it's because they have a morbid curiosity as to what kind of nonsense she's going to say next week. Why people have to sit on my channel and just throw out all these hate comments why don't you just leave like why don't you just get off if you dislike me that much and if you think so low of me then just go to another channel i don't understand why you're still here talking about the don't like don't watch does not apply to certain channels on youtube sometimes i can understand if you don't like it don't watch it it's not for you that's fine i get that sometimes but when we're talking about genres on youtube that are exploiting children they're exploiting being homeless, they're lying to subscribers, um, puzzle pieces are not fitting together, they're grifting or sad fishing, um, and using things like homelessness or uh, tragedy or uh, mental health in order to get more clicks on their videos, you're not allowed to tell people don't like, don't watch it. Because you are exploiting either mental health or whatever it is that your channel is utilizing to get more clicks and views. And when people see certain things being exploited online, they're going to be upset and they have every right to go ahead and leave their opinions. Now, I will never, ever, 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 ever agree with sending threats or saying really, really, really bad stuff because I've, I've had bad stuff said to me and it doesn't feel good, even though it's 
just on a screen and I've been pretty good about just letting most of that stuff roll off my back. It still doesn't feel good and I'll never condone it. But as far as people saying, I don't believe you, I don't think that you're being honest, and I think that you're grifting with your channel, those are not hate comments. Those are just people who disagree with her and her presence online, period. About me in such a negative light. And all the things that are being said are just not true. I never scammed people. I don't go out and spend money on lavish hotels. The hotel that I showed you guys in that one video was actually cheaper those two nights that I stayed there, it was cheaper than the Holiday Inn, not far from it. Uh I don't believe her. I don't believe that a uh, Holiday Inn is going to be more expensive than that hotel that she stayed at. Again, this is the whole trust thing, so I don't believe a word that comes out of this girl's mouth. Um, and, and secondly, as far as everyone just thinking that she's a liar and she's not, well then prove people wrong. In this situation, why don't you show screenshots of what you paid for your hotel versus what the Holiday Inn is? It's very easy to disprove things like this. It would have taken five seconds and it would have shut me up and a lot of other people up, but when you can't prove it, you can't provide the screenshots. Um, I actually had gotten a really good deal on that hotel for those two days. There was like a special going on and it was significantly cheaper than the Holiday Inn. So I was like, well, why not? Like I get to experience downtown LA, a new hotel. And obviously I recorded it because I wanted to show people who haven't been to LA, like what a downtown LA um, hotel looks like. Do you know how many people vlog their trip to downtown LA? Nobody needs Ronnie showing them uh, the inside of their hotel. First of all, people that are traveling to LA or any city for, for that part, um, most of them are going to be looking at travel sites or they're going to be looking on other YouTube travel um, travel vloggers. There's a million places. Nobody needs Ari to specifically go stay at this hotel that is considered a luxury hotel so that she can show everybody what it looks like. LA is not a new city. That hotel is not a new hotel. Nobody needs your... Uh, your review and your footage of sitting up in the bathtub when you are using things like invisible people and homelessness in order to pay for these types of rendezvous that you go on. Um, I, I, I don't like spending money, to be honest. Um, I didn't even want to get myself a hotel, but I felt like I needed it. Um, there are times where I just need to stretch out my legs and take a hot bath and, and sleep in a bed. And I've, in the eight months that I've been living in my car, I've only done that three times, uh, gotten a hotel. And two of those times were, I think one was a Motel 6 and the other was a Holiday Inn, but they weren't expensive hotels. I don't throw out my money. I'm not out here buying myself new clothes. That's another thing I saw. Uh, I don't have new clothes. I don't, I haven't bought new clothes and I don't know how long. Um, I wear a lot of tank tops, um, small, just simple tank tops and you can roll them up and like, they don't take up a lot of space. So I have a lot of those um, and head headbands, head wraps. That's pretty much my attire. People just have well, of course, now she's going to say that she has a bunch of tank tops and they don't take up a lot of room and all of this kind of stuff. Um, I don't believe her. I, I think that this girl is um, doing what she wants to do. And part of doing what she wants to do is going to stores like um, Target and wherever else she goes during the day. Hell, we don't know because she doesn't vlog most of the time. And she saw that money come in from YouTube in the late summer. And she thought that she was going to keep the money train going, but it quickly stopped once people figured out who she was and you guys know the rest of the story. Um, I, I don't, I don't believe a word she says. And honestly, at this point, I am 60, 40 on how much time she spends in her car. I have a very skewed perception of me. And I, I really, really hate that because I get on here and I tell people my truth and what I'm doing and it does get discouraging at times. Okay, so you're telling people your truth, but how about the truth? Because I can tell people my truth all day long, but what I'm doing is telling people the truth. Now I'll insert my opinion into things, but if I was ever asked, um, you know, about like my life story or something like that, I would just lay the cards out. There's no reason to embellish or delete or, um, you know, completely gloss over something that is actually a really big part of your history. I would think that um, 
you know, mishandling your own child is a part of your story that you might want to just own up to early because you know that it's outlined in court documents. Like, are you really that dumb? Like I said, she, in my opinion, underestimated the sluice of the internet. And um, once people question you, it's a wrap from there. Um, I, I know that there's gonna be trolls. I totally get that. But I'm noticing a, a lot of the same things are just being repeated. She is someone who, um, like a lot of other YouTubers, she doesn't understand the difference of people with an opinion versus trolls. And she's just going to be one of those typical people online who categories every, categorizes everyone as a troll. And one, it's not fair to the people who are just leaving their opinion um, to be categorized that way because you know that she's blocking people left and right. And if you have... Um, an opinion that she doesn't like and she comes across it, then she's absolutely going to just, you know, block and delete. But as I said, I think that she has had plenty of opportunities to own up to everything. And she has consistently showed people that she's not going to own up to it. She is not going to address these court documents. And she's going to continue to fall back on the excuse of, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't want to talk about it yet. I'm not mentally prepared. Oh, I had to go to the hospital. Oh, I'm dealing with this. Oh, I'm dealing with that. Um, girl, you don't have a job and people have already exposed it. So why don't you just own up to it so you can continue to move on? And then you'll really figure out, okay, I've owned up to it. I was transparent. I was honest. Let's see who continues to support me at this point, because at least then you can say that you were honest. But again, going back to the, the whole thing with this period of time that has lapsed, I just don't know if people are even going to give her a second chance just because there's been so much time and so much grifting that has gone on in between those documents being exposed and current day. And I feel like I've addressed everything other than one thing that will be shared on my time because that's my story, that's my truth. Um, I'm not hiding anything. I haven't hid anything since I started this channel. Everything I've said has been true. Well, you are hiding it if you're deliberately ignoring it and not talking about it. So um, you didn't come out with this information. The sleuths on the internet did. So they exposed what happened with her son and the treatment that happened to him at her hand. Um, I would say that what she did is in fact hide it and she's not going to talk about it until she wants to. That's pretty obvious. But the more and more time that passes, the more and more it's confirmed that in fact it was being hidden and something that she never thought was going to come out. Damn sure not this early. And I do intend to address everything, but it's going to be on my time. And yeah, but she lied about her birthday. Isn't her birthday in like the winter and she said it was in late July? Put it in the comments down below. I'm a little cloudy on that, but I think she lied about her birthday. So I have to say allegedly because I don't remember crystal clear what happened. But drop it in the comments down below. Like what a silly thing to not be honest about. Like if you're going to sit there and be like, oh, it's my birthday. I'm so sad. I'm going to be all alone. Blah, blah, blah. What? Like you were just saying that because of the time of the month that you were filming this video and you thought that it would get more simps to send you a donation because it was your birthday. That is quite pathetic. Not when the dogs bark. That's my story and that's my heart and that's my testimony and I'm not going to feel rushed into sharing. Your testimony is childless. Oh, I know what she's going to say. So she's going to come out and say, I was a really bad person, but Jesus saved me. And this is part of my testimony. I was actually a really bad person, but then the Lord saved me. And this is who I am today. And I am not that person any longer, even though I ran away from my son and I live on the opposite side of the country now, and I'm not trying to rebuild or, um, you know, mend broken fences with him, assuming that she is allowed to be around him at least part of the time. 
Uh, she is just doing her own thing in California, being a wildflower target, homeless, not homeless vlogger. Something that means everything to me. You know, to sum that all up, I, I understand that there's going to be haters and trolls and naysayers all the time. I totally get that. But everything just seems so skewed and so wrong and people are just totally wrong about me and I don't know how else to share myself and my truth other than how I'm doing it now. In my how are people wrong when all that they're doing is reacting to her words and official court documents? Because and correct me if I'm wrong down below, please, as always, based on what I've seen, I have seen people reacting to things that she has said or she has put on her community page or things that were recorded in the court and released on these public sites, so on and so forth. So what exactly is wrong? Now, I'm all for people sticking to the facts and not just coming out with insane lies just to you know, have, have something to talk about. Like I'm not for that, but with this, it's people saying, hold on, these official court documents say X, Y, Z, and you are saying ABC. So this doesn't correlate. And we're also going to give commentary on other stuff that you're saying and doing. YouTube is full of opinions. I don't know when YouTubers are going to understand that. I have opinions given about me. I give opinions about other people. Like it's a tale as old as time. Um, people are opinionated. And once you put yourself on the public stage, that is social media or YouTube, people are going to say, oh, I hate you. Oh, I kind of like you. Oh, you're stupid. Oh, you're dumb. Um, I, I don't like the way that you do X, Y, Z. Like people are just opinionated. Um, but like I will always say, you can't just call everyone a hater and a troll and ignore people that are actually just saying, look, own up to your stuff so that you can move forward. Make content, own up, your, own up to your stuff, then continue to make content and rebuild from this kind of rut that you have been in. But she has to own her stuff before she can get out of the rut. Opinion, I feel like I've handled most of this with grace and compassion and understanding of where the hate comes from, um, understanding that opinions don't really matter. But then again, they do because I want people to know the real me. You know, I want them to understand me and hear my side of the story instead of making up these storylines that people are feeding into that are just absolutely false. So, okay, storylines, I don't know what she's talking about as far as um, storyline that I've seen is that she's a grifter and I stand by that. Um, you know, as far as people having an opinion, yes, those people do matter. And the best way to get those people on your side would be to be honest and own it. And I don't want to become a broken record. So if I feel like I'm repeating myself too much, I will just like scrub through this video. But you really do have to just come out with it. Like, could you guys imagine if some kind of like court documents were uncovered about me and I had abused a child. Like it, there is no way that I would be able to continue with an inch with more content without owning that because I'm putting out this portrayal as if I'm, you know, this good person and then something is uncovered that gruesome. Um, yeah, like you, you have to answer that. And it's not necessarily on your time because, um, you are making money off of the internet now and you're monetizing your story. That's part of your story. So you need to own up to it and then move on with your content from there. I'm doing the best I can. So the interview with Jude, Rude Jude, I don't even really know what to call him. I guess Jude, his last name's Angelini, I think. <laughs> um, so everything was good. Everything was on schedule. Um, John Matthews is actually the producer that I have been talking to. He is Jude's um, direct. Yeah, it's been about a week now. So that's what happened there. Um, I told him on the phone. I was like, man, this, this sucks. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know what to tell my viewers. Um, I was hyped about the interview. I told my viewers about the interview and John was just like, I know, I'm so sorry. We'll make it up to you, I promise. 
and that was pretty much all that was said. By then, I was just... Okay, so the Rude Jude thing, I am going to scrub through that part. Um, I'm not going to make you guys listen to her nonsensical BS. This is another good example where, in my opinion, she could have showed some receipts to back up this kind of merry-go-round of communication that they were going around with her, and it would have shown people, hey, look, I'm not lying about this. Here's the other side of the conversation. Um, she's in a position right now where she could actually learn the value of showing the other side because up until this point, all we've ever seen is her doing this, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, all of this story, all of these embellishments. And we never see the other side of anything. So that would have been a good opportunity to show that and actually show people, hey, look, this is what actually happened. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what they're saying. Let's move on with it. If I hear from them again, cool. If not, cool. But that's what unfolded with that situation. So I don't know. I don't really care about the rude Jude thing, whether she was catfished, tricked, you know, lied about it. I don't really care, frankly. Um, I think that there's bigger issues when it comes to her and her content. Um, but a bunch of excuses. Am I surprised? No. It's very, very essential and important to me, especially with everything that my life entails. You know, I am 100% honest with you guys. I am very transparent. I haven't hid anything and I'm not hiding anything. And you guys will eventually know every single detail of my life at this rate. Uh. Bullshit. She is not transparent and she has hid things. And she has still not addressed things that people have asked about. People have asked her so many times about these um, situations that happened with her child. If you were a transparent adult, then that would have been the perfect time to own up to it immediately, tell your side of the story, you know, um, prove to your subscribers that you are here to be honest. And when questions come around, it, they some of them need to be answered. She is the one that made the choice to monetize her life story and pepper in all of these different characters. And, um, you know, up until now, she has made a very fair amount of money off of monetizing this situation of, of whatever her vlogs are. I'm almost two months into this YouTube channel and practically my entire life has been spilled out and misinterpreted for the most part. I'm, I'll say that. It's just been misinterpreted and I'm, I seem to be misunderstood by a lot of people. Um, but the ones that are- No, I don't think that people misunderstand her. I think that people are just not here for the bullshit. And because so many grifters have been roaming around YouTube for years now, this is not a new thing. I also think that the subscribers kind of, their ears kind of perk up when someone like Ari comes onto the scene um, or Ari or Ronnie or whatever. Um, someone like her pops up and their antennas go up and they start to put the pieces together. And if the pieces don't align or make a whole lot of sense, then that's where you get people starting to look into other things. And as I said, I just don't think that she thought it was going to happen so quickly. And she has not figured out how to, like, what kind of storyline is she going to feed out to people in order to justify mistreatment of her own child? That's what she's trying to figure out. Because no matter how you present that, it's bad and it's sad and it's tragic and it's disgusting. Are out there defending me and supporting me and taking the time to write out nice comments. I, I truly appreciate you. Um, I'm a tough girl though. Like I, I'm kind of used to life knocking me on my ass, <laughs> um, but I always come out stronger. Things always kind of sounds like you've knocked yourself on your own ass based off of your terrible decision-making skills and constantly making the the same mistake over and over with some situations. So I'm not really sure if life just being hard on Ari is something that I'm going to stand behind. I think that she's someone who um, 
And again, this is just my opinion based off of the content that I've seen. I think that she's someone who is very self-centered, very self-serving, and she wants to do whatever is going to make her the most money, suit her lifestyle the best way that it can, and she's willing to do whatever it takes in order to get there. Please turn around. Uh, I just, I have to stay in faith and keep my head up and keep marching on. That's the only way I can do this and get through it. So for the people who are still here supporting me and um, understand me, I love you. I love you all so much. She doesn't love anyone. I hate when YouTubers do this. YouTubers do not love any of y'all because they don't know any of y'all. Now, unless it's like a really different situation where you're talking to someone every single day and you might know them in real life or something like that. I know that those situations can happen, but these big YouTubers that sit there and say, I love you all to hundreds of thousands of subscribers is bullshit. And it's just a way for her to um, strengthen those parasocial relationships because she knows if she says, oh, I love you guys so much, y'all are the best, then those few people that actually believe that are going to go on the defense for her and come to channels like mine and other commentary channels and leave, you know, bad comments saying, how dare you? And you're the worst person ever. And, um, you know, she, she knows what she's doing. She is not, um, she's not stupid in kind of the typical ways. Um, because I think that she has conned her way through, quite a few situations and YouTube is or was one of them until it wasn't much and I, I really do feel like I have a YouTube family and that means a lot to me like I have a YouTube family bullshit even even like going to um I mean with that incident yesterday somebody a couple people actually uh recognized me from my channel and then I go into the laundry mat just I washed my bedding my uh sleeping bag <laughs> I washed it Oh, it's so nice to have clean bedding. Oh, now a couple people know about her YouTube channel. Oh, my lord. Come on. Um, someone in the laundromat recognized me. and But they're also, like, kind. It's like I, I have family now. Like, I got people that are out here, like, supporting me and loving me and, like, telling me to keep on going and telling me how much. Keep on grifting. That's what they're telling you. They're not, um, you know, anyone that believes everything that she says at this point, you're just... I don't know, like take, take the blinders off. Like maybe eventually you'll see some of the problems with her content. Um, but my God, I inspire them. And really that is my drive at this point. That's what's keeping me going is the people who appreciate me and are seeing changes in their lives because of the influence that I'm giving them. And it's, it's incredible. I'm just rambling, but I did want to update you guys. Um, again, I'm sorry about this clip that I'm about to show. It's it's not very detailed. Um, I, I noticed a lot of like nurses were chiming in saying that they thought it was this or this. So if you do want to know the details of... All right, so at the end of the video, she kind of goes over her injuries again. I'm not going to make y'all sit through that because we've already t discussed that and all of the questions surrounding it. So here are my here are my kind of top takeaways. No, she's not transparent. No, she doesn't have a bunch of haters. Um, and she, I think might have gone past her allotted time to own up to everything and actually be able to keep a lot of her dedicated subscribers. I don't believe that she's recognized everywhere that she goes. Um, I don't think that she has as many true diehard fans as she thinks she has. And I think that a lot of people are just not here for people like, Ari, here's the thing. Life is really hard for a lot of people right now, whether it's employment or mental health or, you know, trying to raise a family or issues at work or even finding work. So to see someone who is a grifting, unemployed, you know, wanting to quit her job and be this YouTuber after exploiting hashtag homelessness so she can ride around and waste gas and not give people content while she shops at Target. Life is short. Like, you know, if you want to spend your time watching someone like her, great. But I know that I speak for some people, not everybody, but a lot of us are going through things right now. And 
there is no reason why after you have a stressful day or a long day or an irritable day or a bad mental health day, you know, why would you want to waste your time watching someone like her who, number one, isn't really even giving people the content. Number two, it's just this grift that she has done the entire time and then trying to turn her, quote, diehard watermelons into people who are even more obsessed with her by calling them family and I love you and y'all are the best. It's dividing subscribers and once that starts to happen, um, based on what I have heard from y'all, it's just at this point in time where time spent on YouTube is desiring the desirable outcome to spend time on YouTube watching someone is not to watch someone sad fish or grift or exploit their kids or be bitchy or be privileged. Um, and it just seems like those YouTubers that are humble and, you know, not here to push their merch down your throats and not here to feed out half truths and then disappear for eight days and then come back with some kind of catastrophe that happens those YouTubers are getting kind of hard to come by. And, um, you know, I don't know, YouTube is just in a really weird place right now. And I'm trying to make my way through it as, as someone who uploads onto this platform. Um, and I'm not doing it all right. And I don't think that I ever will. But what I can say is that I will never come here to grift or sad fish or lie or, um, you know, push different streams of income. Oh, buy my merch, do my Patreon, get my YouTube member uh, ship. That's just not what I'm here for. And I don't think I'll ever be here for that. Um, but certainly right now I can stand very firm in that stance and I just appreciate you guys. So, um, you know, find YouTubers that you feel really good supporting and you feel like you're not pressured to help them or, buy something to support them. Just make sure that you feel good. And if you feel good watching someone like her, then all power to you. Um, but like I always say, you should know full and well who it is that you're supporting on this platform. And in my opinion, Ari is the master grifter of 2022. And we'll just have to see what happens next. So I hope this video wasn't too long. I know that you guys like the longer videos sometimes. So hopefully it just satisfies everyone. For now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.